Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Here in Nebraska, we've been uh, experiencing a big, big snowstorm. So I haven't left the house since Sunday. The kids finally went to school today, uh, had a late start. So today we are going to continue on with the reading of Dr. Atkins' Diet Revolution by Dr. Robert Atkins. If uh, you're new here, uh, my name is Lori and I do videos about my experiences with the Atkins diet and I share tips and tricks that I learned on, along the way and just uh, any information that I feel might be helpful to others. So if you have any questions at any time, feel free to leave a comment. So let's continue on where we left off last week. Why didn't people lose on a 1000 calorie all carbohydrate diet? In search of the mechanism that caused this result, they analyzed the urine of the patients on varying diets and found no FMH, fat mobilizing hormone, present during the term of the diets continuing sorry, containing carbohydrate, but plenty of it in the urine during the terms of diets composed either of all fat and or protein and no carbohydrate. In other words, FMH is a natural substance of the human body that is only produced when the diet contains little or no carbohydrate. And its presence in the urine means that the individual is using up his fat stores as body fuel. What is in the urine is what is left over after it has done its work of tapping the fat stores. Now we don't know precisely how this or any other hormone works. We can only observe what happens. What is the signal that summons up the genie? Apparently the signal for the pituitary gland to release the fat mobilizing hormone into the bloodstream is the absence in the diet of ready fuel, in other words, carbohydrate. When no carbohydrate is available, the body says to pituitary, I need fuel, break down my fat so I can get some. By cutting carbohydrates, this marvelous natural body substance, FMH, this magic bullet is released by the pituitary and circulated in the bloodstream. And the production of FMH is the whole purpose of this diet and the reason it works when all other diets fail. <coughs> the presence of FMH circulating in your bloodstream guarantees that you are being continuously fed fuel which originates from your own unwanted stores of fat. This is so, because the FMH makes your fat storage dep uh, depots continually available to your body as fuel. But remember, the magic key here is no carbohydrates to begin and later carbohydrates added only very gradually in tiny amounts as discussed early in the chapter and explained more fully later. The fourth difference, even the most stubborn non-loser losers loses. <laughs> it has almost never happened that a patient has come back at the end of the first week of the diet and said, doctor, I followed your diet and I didn't lose. On the rare occasions when this has happened, we have always been able to find a correctable reason later on in chapter 14. But there is an enormous difference in the ease and speed with which different people lose. Singer Leslie Ugams is an easy loser. It only takes her a few days to shed pounds on the anti-carbohydrate diet. Doris Lilly, the author and columnist, is another easy loser. She lost 20 pounds the first month and has stayed slim five years. One of my associates interviewed her using a tape recorder. 
This is how she tells about her weight loss. I was struggling into a size 16, and there aren't any size 18s except in the tent department, but I got taken out a lot. I sort of didn't notice. Then one night, I was at, on the Merv Griffin show wearing a new shiny Norel dress. It was a taped show. When I saw myself on the screen, I cried. I looked like a shiny silver tub. Fat, fat, fat. I went for dinner to the Uchitels. <laughs> he owned El Morocco at the time, and I was crying, and she told me about Dr. Atkins. So I went to him and lost 40 pounds, 20 of them the first month. No shots, no pills, except Dr. Atkins gave me mega doses of vitamins, including vitamin C. That's because I don't have orange juice for breakfast, I guess. All it takes is guts. You certainly get plenty to eat. Of course, I don't drink, that helps. Oh, and I'll take one scotch occasionally, not more. He changed my whole habit of eating. I haven't had a loaf of bread in the house since. Like so many Americans, I used to have a sandwich for lunch. Now it's grilled meat and fish. No problem. I wear a size 10. My bra size went from 40D to 36C. Even my feet are smaller. I gave away all my shoes, in fact all my clothes, but my handbags, and fur coats. It's five years now and I've never gained it back. Calorie counting can't help stubborn non-losers. I see only a few lucky people who lose quickly and almost without effort. Most overweight patients have lived their lives entirely around a heartbreaking series of diets that haven't worked. I love to see these patients at the end of the first week on the diet. I wouldn't give up that satisfaction for anything. They invariably have lost weight and without hunger. A biochemical miracle has happened. They dare to hope again. For many, this week signals the beginning of a new life, a rebirth. You can lose on this diet. Even people who haven't been able to lose living on 800 or 900 calories a day for month after month. I feel that people with this metabolic resistance to weight loss are handicapped people. This diet unlocks that resistance while a low calorie diet can't touch it. One of my patients, Perry Zenley, is one of those handicapped people, but once he stopped counting calories and started counting grams of carbohydrate, he came out of that category. Perry Zenley was a heroic dieter, but fat just the same. Perry Zenley, 45, is an engineer and one of the most disciplined characters I met in my practice. Even when he was nine, fat boy clothes had to be made especially for him. He's been fat all his life. Such is Perry Zenley's metabolic handicap that he gains if he eats more than 1,100 calories a day. This is unusual in a male since male metabolism runs higher than female. Most of his life, he's been starving on 900 calories a day. So he would gain and lose, gain and lose, almost always hungry, feeling rotten, and with very poor future prospects indeed. Nobody can live that way indefinitely. That sounds very sad. He starved on 900 calories a day for a month, for month after month. He had lost 50 pounds by existing miserably for months on a 900 calorie a day diet when he came to me. He had already regained 26 of those pounds and weighed 268 and three quarters pounds. He rarely had a drink. He had never been an eater of sweets. How could he continue to stay this heavy? Now he has been on the zero carbohydrate diet for over a year and has lost 99 pounds. 
His suit size went from 56 to 40. His metabolic resistance to losing is so great that it has never been possible for him to lose when we tried adding any carbohydrate at all to his diet. So he is still basically on the first week's diet, a biologically carbohydrate-free diet, and he still has weight to lose, but don't feel sorry for him. He lost that 99 pounds without hunger and without counting calories. This is the greatest thing that ever happened to me, he keeps telling me. It's a new way of life. I'm never hungry. It's wonderful. I don't want to go off this diet ever. Perry Zenley eats such a big dinner, sometimes as much as one and a half pounds of meat, salad, or one half cup of green vegetables and deserta. I'm not really sure what deserta is. That he can't eat breakfast except for a cup of coffee with heavy cream and sweetener. His lunch is usually bacon and two scrambled eggs. If he feels uh, if he feels like it, he eats cheese between meals and before bed. I've been getting younger every week since I came, he says. Not just that I look and feel younger. It's a physical fact. I am younger. And he's right. Zenli, the son of two diabetic parents, was a known diabetic. He was taking medication for this when he came to me. He was also a hypertensive requiring more medication for that. I was able to get him off all his medications. His blood pressure and blood sugar are both now normal. His cholesterol, which was 335 on his first visit, fell to a normal reading of 215. If, like Perry Zenley, you have stuck to low calorie diets in spite of the hunger and deprivation that goes with them, I can say to you, that your worries are over. You have demonstrated that you have the personal qualities it takes to win. And combined with the technical know-how you'll find in this book, they should enable you to weigh what you'd like to weigh the rest of your life. I think that those are just absolutely amazing stories. And of course, we all know that uh, they share the truly amazing stories so that we can, uh, you know, get motivated and uh, believe that it does work. And I'm not an amazing story, nowhere even close. But, I mean, that one lady lost 20 pounds in the first month. I lost 20 pounds in a year. So I'm nowhere close. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you lose 20 pounds in a month or a year. As long as you're making progress, that's all that matters. And if this doesn't work for you, there's uh, tips later on in the book that uh, share some things you can do. Uh, make sure you're looking at all the ingredients and in everything that you're making and things like that. Just, just make sure um, if you're following this diet that you are... Um, just basically make sure you're checking your ingredients and make sure that you know you're not having carbs that are hidden because there's a lot of hidden carbs and things. And, uh, well, that guy said that he ate uh, scrambled eggs and bacon every day for lunch. That's kind of what I do, except for I'm not a bacon person. I like sausage better. So I start off my day with uh, scrambled eggs and sausage I get tired of it sometimes and I'll go and find some leftovers from dinner in the last couple of nights and heat that up or I'll make myself a cheeseburger. No bun, of course. And that's usually what I start my day off with. And for dinner, I'm, you know, I, I have different things. I've, I've altered my meatloaf recipe. Instead of breadcrumbs, I now use pork rinds. It sounds kind of weird, but if you crush them up really good, nobody even tastes it. Nobody knows the difference. My family eats it. And just little things like that that we can do as we're starting off on this and, 
it can do a lot to change things. So um, that's the end of that chapter. Next time we'll be getting into chapter three, how I arrived at this diet revolution. I think that will be interesting. I thought it was when I read this book and I hope that you do too. So if there's any questions you have about what we read today or any questions about the diet plan in general, um, put a comment and I'll answer them. And we have a question here. Do I ever intermittent fast? I wouldn't call it intermittent fasting, but like right now, it's 1026 in the morning. I haven't eaten anything. Not because I'm purposely doing it, but because I haven't really been hungry yet. Um, I woke up this morning around 7. I've been doing other stuff around the house and got my my daughter had a late start to school so she just got on the bus about 9 20 and then I got ready for this and you know I haven't felt like I'm hungry yet so usually I only eat two meals a day and then have a little snack sometime in the afternoon so like I said a little bit ago I start my day with uh, scrambled eggs and or whatever and so usually about 11 o'clock noon is when I'm getting hungry uh, I do have classes now on Tuesdays and Thursdays so I will I take along a couple of beef sticks and some string cheese to eat on my way there while I'm driving because it's an hour drive to get to this class that I go to um, and then I just have my dinner so yeah, I wouldn't call it intermittent fasting on purpose, but I hear that a lot of people that do it say that they they fast for 12 hours. Well, if I stop eating at 9 p.m., I've done more than 12 hours. So I hope that uh, answers that for you. But. That's all I really have for today, so I will see you next week, and I hope you're enjoying the reading of the book.